Good afternoon, class. We are looking at section 1.6, sequences and difference equations. A sequence is a list of numbers written in a specific order, a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way to a sub n. Here's the first one, second one, and the nth term. A sub n is the general term, and n is the set of positive integers. Recursive sequence, also known as a difference equation. The next term depends on knowing the previous one or previous ones. a sub n plus 1 equals f of a sub n. An arithmetic sequence is in the form of a sub 1, a sub 1 plus d, all the way to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where the difference d, also known as the distance between consecutive terms, is constant that can be defined by the following. If we go recursively, a sub n plus 1 is a sub n plus d, meaning if you want a term, pick a previous one and add a uh, distance or uh, difference, a fixed number. If you wanted explicitly, a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Example, 1, 5, 9, 13. As you can see, this is a sub 1. And we are adding 4, therefore d is 4. In the case of a geometric sequence, we multiply by R, it's known as a common ratio or simply ratio. A sub 1, A sub 1 times R, A sub 1 times R squared, A sub 1 times R to the power of N minus 1, where each term is uh, defined, is each term is R times the previous one and can be defined recursively. A sub N plus 1 is R, A sub N, meaning uh, if you want any term, pick the previous one times r. Or, in general, explicitly a sub n is a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Again, this is the first term, a sub 1. Notice we multiplied by 4, so r becomes 4. One times 4 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 16 is 64. A sequence is a list of numbers written in a specific order. So we're going to elaborate on what we just did. Measurements collected at discrete time points and quantities that undergo periodic changes, such as annual plant or insect populations, are studied using the concepts of sequences, the data, and difference equations, the description of the change. And a sequence is a real valued function f whose domain is the set of natural numbers. What are natural numbers? 1, 2, 3 goes to infinity. We use the notation a sub n to, den to denote f of n, f uh, of n. And so the first term is a sub 1, second one is a sub 2, and the general term is a sub n. And as you call, we have, for example, whole numbers. If we put 0, 1, 2, 3, we have rational numbers, irrational numbers, uh, real numbers. Uh, now, we want to work on this simple example, a sub n equals n. For example, if we choose n equals 1, can anybody tell me if a, n equals 1, what we get here? If we choose this, to be, this one to be 1, this becomes 1. If we choose this one to be 2, this becomes 2. So a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2 is 2. That means we have one, two, three, four, five, because we are interested in the first five terms. We are going to do the same thing here. We're going to replace the n with one, two, three, four, five. And what happens, we get sine of pi over two. This one is sine of two pi over two, sine of three pi over two. This is sine of four pi over two, sine of five pi over two. So again, if I wanted to write that, this would be two pi over two, everybody. This would be 4 pi over 2. So what are they equal to? I want to remind you of what you have learned in some basic uh, trigonometry. Number one, if you have a circle centered at 0, 0 with radius r, the formula is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This uses the Pythagorean theorem or distance formula. If it's centered at h, comma k, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. 
If we choose the radius to be one, the name is a unit circle because simply put the radius is R. Therefore, if we have that, this point has coordinates one, zero, this one, zero, one, this one minus one, zero, this one, zero, negative one. So as far as trigonometry is concerned, it's going to look like this. Why is that? I want to remind you again uh, that this is zero degrees or zero radians. This is pi over two radians or 90 degrees, pi 180 degrees, 270 degrees or three pi over two. And when you look at this concept of a unit circle, remember the definition of a sine and cosine. Sine is the opposite so this is the angle, opposite over the hypotenuse. When the hypotenuse is one, becomes just sine t. And therefore, sine t is the y coordinate. Now, the cosine is the adjacent. This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine is x. So x represents cosine, y represents sine. So let's write this. x is cosine, y is sine. Okay, and with that being the case, if we look at these points, starting with this point here or here, this is zero degrees, you notice that cosine zero is one, but sine zero is zero. If we go to this point or this point, then cosine of pi over two or 90 degrees is zero and sine is one. If we go to this point, now cosine of pi or 180 degrees is negative one and sine is zero. This one, Cosine of three power two is zero, and sine of three power two is negative one. So the general idea is that sine of n pi becomes zero, cosine of two n plus one power two is zero. I wanna make sure that we understand what's going on here. n pi, that means if you multiply pi by any integer, you end up with zero. But two n plus one times power two means odd multiples of uh, pi over two. So with that being the case, sine of pi over two is one, sine of pi is zero, sine of three pi over two is negative one, sine of two pi goes back to zero, zero or two pi are the same, it's zero. Five pi over two, that means a complete revolution of two pi plus pi over two. So this is the same as pi over two and that becomes one. So those are the answers. So let me, Clean up, you can see that. C sub n is defined as n over one plus n. For example, if I choose n to be one, everybody, n equals one results in one half. Can anybody tell me what happens if I choose n equals two? C sub two is two over one plus two. That means two thirds. So one half, two thirds. So if you continue, you get three fourths, four fifths, and five sixths. Finally, on this page, D sub N represents the digit in the nth decimal place of pi. Pi is approximated by 3.14, but it's not equal to that. Pi is 3.14159, and it continues indefinitely. So the end decimal, the first decimal is one. The second decimal is four. The third one is one. The fourth one is five. The fifth one is nine. And that's all we want, the first five terms. And that's all there is to it. 